Welcome to Three Furlongs Out on the Line. We're joined tonight by two fantastic characters, one from Ireland and one from England. We'll start with Barry Pinkton. Barry, you're a formidable force in the race courses around England. I hear you're not afraid to take a bet. How are you keeping, Barry? Uh, not doing too badly, really. Enjoying the sunshine. 25 years, we've never had it this nice, have we? And we can't get out and work. The only work I'm doing, I'm working harder now in the garden than I am on my stool. Uh, yeah, but one of things, we're all in the same boat, aren't we? And we have to get on with it. Well, that tan there, you definitely didn't get that in the betting ring anyway. I think that's the back garden more like it, isn't it? Yeah, well, I certainly didn't get it on holiday, put it that way. No, yeah. no. <laughs> uh, you'd be chomping at the bit to get back at racing. This, it's obviously safety before anything at the minute, but it's, it's supposed now the novelty's word off. We just all want to get back to normality, don't we? Yeah, I think the thing is as well, I mean, it, we look at an outdoor sport as well, aren't we? I mean, I know there's lots of uh, rules and regulations and, and, you know, people getting close to each other and everything else, but we're, we're, we're yeah, you know, it's easy to a certain degree. But unfortunately, I think we're going to be at the bottom of the pile, to be quite honest with you. So I think we're going to be uh, stranded in the garden for a few months yet, I must admit. Yeah, well, hopefully we can get there as safety before. But at the same time, it's people's livelihood. People, I think to a certain extent, people say, obviously, it's a sport, right? But people's business relies a lot on the sport. So it fundamentally it's a sport, but when you come down to it, there's an awful lot relies on it to get put bread in the table. That's where people, the government and all these have to comprehend where it comes from. Because it's easy just to turn around and say, Oh, it's a sport, sure. It's a hobby. It's more than a hobby to some. It has to be. It, we can only sustain the life we have by getting back to work, really, can't we? Yeah, exactly, right across the board for everyone. You know, for trainers, for owners, you know, for bookies, for, for race courses, they're feeling the pinch. You know, I think at Chester, my local track, I think um, there's, there's talk that it's actually worth about a million pounds per meeting to the actual economy in Chester. You know, with the, with the uh, I don't know if you've been to Chester, the race courses, mm. but the race course, bang on it on the town centre, great um, evening entertainment, you know, go racing out in the evening. It's a brilliant, uh, you know, day out basically and that, they, they reckon locally it's worth a million pound a day so you know obviously a fair chunk of that go towards the race course because they do put on a great show you know they get big crowds um and people want to get out don't they they want to get out and see natural racing they want to go out and see you know they, they want to basically get out of the house and, and do things now and I, I do believe that to be fair to the government in my mind they've done it okay so far with regards to you know restraining it to stop it spreading within reason obviously sadly we've had a lot of lives uh, gone astray um, you know, people died obviously because of it. But I think, um, I think now, I think now's the time to move forward. Um, and especially with the outside areas, you know, I'd like to see race courses maybe uh, think of okay, we're not going to have too many people inside, but we can maybe uh, put bars outside. We can spread the bookies out. We can maybe you know have the queues a little bit longer. Uh, you know, around the paddock, around the parade ring. Let's be sensible. The difference is now, I think, from you know a couple of months ago when I stood at Cheltenham. Um, people were thinking, well, it's not in our face, it's not here, whatever. Everybody's aware of it now. So the, the fact is that everyone's being sensible in their, within reason themselves because obviously, you know, you don't want to catch it and you don't want to pass it on. You know, so the bottom line is people are being sensible. So I think you've got to give the public the head to be sensible wherever they are, whether it's race courses, whether in town, whether in a shop, you know, wherever. And I think people in general are, are sort of like following that rule, really. Yeah, it makes sense. Like, as I say, we're all in this together. I don't think... Everyone just wants it to sort of go as quick as it came because as Cheltenham was, it was phenomenal in the racing, but with the backlash after, it just, you, you couldn't foresee it, what, what happened afterwards. And sitting in Cheltenham on Tuesday, there was what I felt like it was like the Coliseum burning around you because I knew nothing was going on in Cheltenham, but outside it, everyone was panicking and but inside the Cheltenham itself, it felt like an ordinary meeting. It didn't feel any different to me anyway. That's the way I felt about it. Like. Yeah, I mean, I, I was I was slightly cautious because, it, you know, um, but I've got a, a, an underlying health um, issue anyway. But, I mean, I was a little bit cautious. I made sure I washed my hands a bit more. And I was a little bit, you know, I mean, a, a little bit more careful. And that was because you're never quite sure, you know, as it happens, uh, it's coming to the country and it spread reasonably quickly, hasn't it? Because, it, you know, uh, the R rate was obviously quite high then, quite a lot of people at Cheltenham. However, you know, at the time, I think, um, I personally think it was, a, it was the right thing to do. And looking back on it, it probably wasn't at the time. You know what I mean? So it's... Uh, Hindsight's a great thing, isn't it? But Hedging your bets, I suppose, but yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, we get on to the other guest we have on the line is Mark Jason Farring. 
He's a horse racing correspondent for Tip Media West. He does a bit of writing for us here at Three Furlongs Out. And he also does media work for Boyle Sports with Ireland's leading bookmaker. How are you doing, Mark? Good, darn yourself. You're starving the hairdresser there, are you? <laughs> yeah, if, I'm <laughs> hide, I'm, the cap is not even covering it anymore. I think I'm going to have to change <laughs> I'm going to have to go to the black market and find a, a hairdresser somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are, you, how are you getting on? Yeah, it's like everyone now, we're all getting itchy feet. We just want to get back out. And I suppose the sunshine, it's good in a way, but still it's, it's making us want to go out and do more activities. It's, it's grand, as Barry was saying, we're out in the garden, of course. We've, we'll all have fresh vegetables now in a few months. But uh, no, look, we all want to get back into some bit of a routine and try and get going and get you know everything back up and running again. I suppose the only thing different towards me and Barry is we actually have a date when the shops are kind of going to reopen in, in Ireland. Now it's going to be a slow and it's going to be an albeit weird process compared to what we're used to, but at least we have a date, like the 29th of June. Hopefully, maybe we can even go a week or two before that, depending on rules and regulations. But look, Ireland is going the right way. Numbers are going rapidly down so we just want to keep it going now and hopefully now over the next few weeks everything will stay going the way it's going and we can get back to a bit of normality but um when i when i started out actually i started out on the ring working for a, a bookmaker on the ring i actually used to run first and then i was a clerk and uh so to be in barry's position it must be very very frustrating yeah very much so what's your views on that barry like do you, do you think that the dates should be there for you, or do you, do you agree you sort of have to just sit and suffer as such? Well, I mean, uh, you know, like I said earlier, I'm, a, I'm an ambassador for, for getting bookies on, on the track, really. Uh, in my mind, there's no reason why um, we can't go outside. Well, well, why can't we? I mean, OK, then you've got the political side of the, the numbers maybe being cut or um, pitches, you know, the rails aren't, if you like, six foot apart at certain places. Um, you know, do you, do, you, do you have every other one? Do you then take out pick number one, number three, number five, or do you take, just drop off the bottom end ones, which always seems to be the case. You know, the top end pick numbers always seem to get the cream. Okay, they paid the money, but we all pay the same badge. You now, I've got good and bad pitches. We all say pay the same rent. It's not like, uh, you know, the house on Mayfair um, and the house, you know, down down the back end of beyond um, pay different rents. We all pay the same rent. Uh, so there's no reason, you know, why a bookmaker at the end of the line should be stopped from betting, really. Uh, which could be the case, so that's not really fair. But I do believe coming back to it, yeah, we should we should have a date. But of course, Chester just announced, you know, the, the July and August meetings are a are, are, are kaput. Um, we're looking at September. You maybe then looking at October, and of course, then you know we make our money in the summer. You know, okay, I do the all weather at Wolverhampton and places, but yeah, that's only just to keep you know ticking over, keep me, mm. keep the eye in really. This is the time yeah. that on course bookmakers this time of year, really from the Derby onwards, channel them yes to a certain degree. But the Derby, you know, Aintree, uh, we're now mm. talking about, you know, Chester. There's a great, should have been a great three day meeting at Chester a couple of weeks ago, you know, the Derby trial. Um, and, you know, the, the bottom line is now we're, we're sort of, we're starting sitting on our hands and we're not able to work. Now, I do a bit mm. of trotting now. That could be another issue, perhaps. There might be, uh, that might come forward a little bit earlier because. You don't get the, the amount of crowds yeah. you would do for a normal thoroughbred race. Mm. You know, but um, it's, it's, it is frustrating. We're definitely going to be uh, last man standing with regards to get out there and actually get some work done. But, and it's going to be too late, probably. I don't want to be, I don't want to be turning up in November or December when the weather's gone cack and, uh, you know, there's, there's one man and his dog there. Yeah. You know? it's, it's just, it's, it's hard to know. But the same angle, the idea where I come from, and both of you is in the same aspect, Mark and Barry. Like, cash is always king in the bet, betting industry. But I think when we come out of this all, I think cash could start a fade as such. What would your take on that be? Like, would it be yeah. more cards or would it be more, what way would you think it could come out? Yeah, well, possibly. Well, over here, our, our governing body, the AGT, um, we look after the, the, the on-course bookmakers, uh, the veteran managers, um, you know, and they liaise with the race courses and obviously any problems with regards to tickets, lost tickets or wrong bets and all that sort of stuff. Um, apparently they've got some software in place now that we can take cards. Now, some of the lads do take cards already. Uh, there's a couple of different systems over here. There's the Elite system, which is slightly ahead of uh, the RDT system, which I use. Um, and, and they sort of grasped the nettle uh, by the hand, basically, and, and got on with it. And, and I believe they've got the, the, the facilities to do that. Um, but 
so the, the if you like the technology is there uh, or, or or being fronted for uh, us racecourse bookmakers in the future um however uh, there's nothing better is there than a punter going to a racetrack and and you know having a tenner on and getting 20 quid back in his hand yeah. You know. I'm just gonna. I was just gonna say that actually, like from my experience, I go racing a good bit. Like you have money on the online accounts, but there's nothing better than going with a bit of cash and maybe even having a bit more cash coming home. More than likely, I have no cash coming home. But <laughs> okay, well, the, ti- the time that you do have the little the little bundle coming into your pocket there, just it's just that different feeling. It's 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 kind of a tradition with the racing, like and Barry from being from his local meet in Chester. I've probably been at every race course numerous of times in Ireland, some race courses in the UK, but Chester is definitely um, on the bucket list. Like, And as regards November for Chester, it's just a no-no. Chester's always May. It's always, it's always nearly, this, you'd always, it's always nearly good weather for some reason. And it's just, it's just for me, Chester is the start of summer. Of course, with Channel 4, BBC used to cover it and, you just want to be there, like. But if you have a look at the pictures from last year, it wasn't the start of summer then, I can assure you. Oh, no, last year was a washout, wasn't it? Oh, it was monsoon, yeah. It was monsoon. Yeah, yeah. If you had weather like this, the Rudy would be absolutely heaving. Yeah. You know, but, you know, like I say, we've got to get on with it, but it's such a shame that these, you know, big meetings are, if you like, are going to waste at the moment. You know, and is it, is it warranted? In my mind, no. Mm. And and next... Oh, go ahead, Mark. Regards... Coming back to racing, then Barry, like, w- would you have an, a system in place maybe that every bookmaker, or, or not every bookmaker, but every race course maybe have an online ticket system from so many people are allowed to go? Or what would your opinion be on on coming back live racing? As you said, it is an open wide area. Like, it's probably probably one of the safest places to be actually. And Darren, you touched on it there about Cheltenham, but I think I think people went overboard with Cheltenham. It's just, and a lot of people like, don't get me wrong. I was I'm Cheltenham's biggest fan. Maybe hindsight it should, probably shouldn't have went ahead, but it was just one of those situations where it was like a week later it was gone and a week before it was okay. But I think p- some people just kind of kept holding on to it. But there was other events that went ahead. But realistically, realistically, more speaking, if Cheltenham went ahead or Cheltenham didn't go ahead, we're still be in this predicament we yes. are now. Like it's not as if that it. It started off in Cheltenham, like that was the first place that it was found. Cheltenham's to blame for the whole world collapsing, right? There was stuff on or in and around Cheltenham. Right. There were yeah. played. There was the whole. But I'm saying now, and I really think if our if Mikel touching away from racing for a second, if Arteta didn't po- test positive, the Premiership would have went ahead the following weekend as well. That's my taking it. Like. But as you said, Darren, there was like there was concerts here in in the o, in the O2 in Dublin, like. I just think sometimes it's very easy to lash onto racing and betting because so it, like certain people do frown upon it, and I think people, especially when it comes, not saying media, but like everybody with social media now, they just it's 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 an outlet. Like just to some people just use it just to to rant and like fair enough if it got the backlash and but it was still going on months later when it was. It was forgotten about, like you know. Mm. But as I say, horse racing is always going to have that there to be about it. If the if they use uh, My Little Pony sticks instead of the Carson sticks, people would still complain. If we use a packet of sweets, they're not. We're not getting on the whip to be it, but horse racing is always going to have that Aye, there yeah. frowned upon for the for the angle of gambling. People say that it caught it ruins life, drinking ruins life. Everything is everything oh. has a certain limit, and it's. It's, it's it's just it's not like horse racing is not fault for coronavirus and that's just it but it, i think coming back they are being a lot more cautious because of the backlash that they received and i think that's if Cheltenham didn't go ahead now i do believe that we could have started around about the time france started back there racing again with scenes that went pretty well and, and all things considered like yeah look hopefully as we i seen the declarations for newcastle on monday Hopefully that gets to go ahead. I don't think it's actually okay by the government yet, but I think it's it's just it's it's um it's all systems go really. But like as you said, Darren, we need it back. Like it's an industry. It's there's a lot of people out of work because of this, and I think we need to get both countries back working. So what's your opinion on Newcastle having thirty six twelve runner races? Yeah, they start at eight in the morning and finish at eight at night. Apparently, I was looking at. 
the declarations for Monday though, I, it was it only looked like a seven or eight race card. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah are, somebody said they had three hundred and fifty odd entries or something today initially. Yeah, yeah. 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 They're, uh, they're probably going to get every every race meeting is probably going to get overrun with entries now, but yeah. after a while, it's just going to be it'll level out again once. But the, but the interest, I think, personally, like. I'm an Irish horse racing fan. I love horse racing, but generally English horse racing, I wouldn't be as mad about. And I wouldn't even see when the racing does come back. I know I'd be inclined not to, to bet maybe as much as I would do because of the uncertainty about everything else in your life. I think that the more racing's on, the less interest it could be as well. I know that it's coming down the stage now where it's basically it's nothing to do with public interest. It's about keeping the industry going, and that's just the way it is. Until people are back at race course and bookmakers are back. I think that the the public interest mightn't just be there the way it was before as such. I'm right in saying that. I don't know. Yeah, well, I, th- I think what you're saying earlier, Das, as well, you, your question is with regards to when we get back racing, you've got to bear in mind, uh, to be fair, it's the same with the shops on the high street, that people, um, punters, because um, in all honesty, the, the good cash punters within reason um, are slightly the older people. You know, the, the older people are used to having a bet, the farmer types, inverted commas, People are yep. used to, you know, not, not used to maybe modern technology. They're quite happy to go with X amount in the pocket to the race courses and spend with the bookies because that's what they've known. However, the generations coming through are a lot more um, internet app savvy, aren't they? You know, um, and there's so much more information, not only for horses, but obviously for prices. You know, that's why bookmakers on course now get a, a, a bad slating. Um, you know, because you, you can compare an eight to one to a nine to one on the exchange or whatever. I mean, to a, to a certain degree, it's never been so good, actually, for punters going racing. Okay, unfortunately, we all might be relatively the same price because we're governed by the exchanges, as we know. But the punter doesn't realise that. He doesn't realise we're only betting to 110% of race, whereas, you know, four or five years ago, we were 125% of race. So our margins have gone out the door with, within reason. You know, our expenses have gone up and marketing fees. And since we signed these new, um, you know, uh, the regulations with the race courses and our, our new licenses with them, um, you know, we're half being shafted. Marketing fee for every different pitch you have, or be, you might only go one day, it might cost you 100, 150 quid. Well, they all add up. You know, yeah. I might have seven, I've got roughly 70 different pitches in a silvering, in a, on a rail, or in tats. Uh, pal of mine's got three at Aintree. And he has to, he, he pays a marketing fee for going on the embankment on the Saturday. He pays a marketing fee for, uh, he actually only goes one day for the national meeting. And I think it's a Friday. He pays a marketing fee for that. And then the off meetings, he pays a marketing fee for that. And there's only eight meetings there. So he's yeah. paying in the reason of three and a half, four, five hundred pounds for three meetings over, you know, uh, over eight, eight days, basically. So we're being shafted. That was never, that was never in. So we're, we're being hammered by the race courses. Because we're bookies and we all, they all think we're making plenty. It couldn't be further from the truth, you know. Yeah, well, uh, well, personally, I think that the bookies are always going to get backlash as well. It's that that their taboo is never going to change with with people that interest in horse racing. That bookmakers are a crook industry as such. And as you say, there, you to cut your margins down, and people don't understand that. People would work the opposite way and say you've actually put your margins up, but that's just inaccurate. Like the parts where people are being told is old bookmaking, and they, that bookmaking's gone. The rules yeah. have changed. The, I would say the game said the same, but the rules have changed. They've lifted the ball completely and put it to the other side of the pitch now. But I think people are, are the facts, and people are putting out now are the old facts, and they're still going with them there. And it's, I think. Everyone's trying to progress, but at the same time, everyone's still trying to use the old rules that are gone. So I think that. We need a the bookmaking is, is very transparent. I think the rule the very little companies now are getting pulled up, and when they are getting pulled up, they're getting heavily fined. So you're not doing what they're doing. So I think it's going the right way of bookmaking as such for rules and regulations. Everything's being done. I don't think there's anyone that's not can't follow it or you wouldn't have a license too long. No, 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 true. I mean, there was the unfairness wasn't at Ascot not long ago when the um. Well, the underage gambling, when they, you know, that, I don't know if you know about that, but there was there was yes. fines. A couple of my pals were fined, sort of seven, uh, five, seven thousand. You know, I think it was two and a half percent. I think it was of the the, the gross profit, or it might be five percent. I'm not quite sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, but that's been rescinded quite rightly so because uh, you know it's, it's not particularly right, is it, that you send somebody in underage to uh, you know to to catch somebody out really, you know, and they're probably up to twenty five, you know, and all bookmakers are in general, and this is another. Um, 
is another thing that you know in the past, like you say, people think oh, bookmakers are rogues or the the, the the you know the thieves and the this that and the other. You couldn't be further from the truth. You couldn't be further from the truth. Most on course bookmakers, uh, honourable, um, law abiding citizens. You know, um, and that that's the case in the old days when people used to nod on. Yeah, down a cap, hundred pound and fifty down a cap. Pay me afterwards. Lardy da, money would change hands afterwards. Yeah. Well, what I what I loved, I read this here book, and I can't remember where I even read it, but it turned around and said, if a bookmaker overpaid you fifty pound, would you give it back? But if the bookmaker underpaid you favour, would you would you be looking for it? So I think that the punters in the same breath, like if you overpaid me now, the, the likelihood of you getting that there back will be slim for any punter. So, but yet if you make them, you're not allowed to make a mistake. Bookmakers, they're not no. human. No, so that's where I think. Where if you if you under paid someone a hundred pound and they went on social media and they tarnished you, you did this here. It would cause you a lot more damage than that there. So I think the bookmakers aren't allowed to make mistakes in the no, modern exactly. era. Well, I, I mean, you know, we all we always get half a dozen a year whereby shoes inquiry ten minutes after the results are announced, we're paying people out. Oh, why don't you wait till the way in? Yeah, okay, but you know, you, you you're doing a service. You know, you pay out, they want to have another bet. Um, yeah, okay, we could wait 15 minutes to pay out, fair enough. But we pay people out, and because you paid them out, they think, oh, well, no, he's giving me the money, you know, whatever. But we're the ones out of pocket, and there's no margin there. You know, we're paying people, you know, there, there was a case, wasn't there, the, the Ascot debacle a couple of years yeah. ago. Fortunes were paid out, absolute fortunes. And then they, they, then they, reversed, it, then they reversed it again, you know. It's, um, with their hands, with it, yeah. It's, it's one of those things, really, but we, you have to get on with it. It's part and parcel of being a bookie. Um, you know, uh, there's all sorts going on. When you go racing, you just have to be savvy. Um, you know, yeah. we've got stories coming out of our ear holes about things we've done wrong, you know. Yeah. That's very, you, you don't hear too much positive stories. That's what I'm saying. Where everyone prays to highlight the industry is that you sit up late at night trying to can evil getting money out of people. That's all you do with your time, don't you? You start no interest in horse racing whatsoever. All you are interested in getting a dollar. And as you say, it's far from the truth. But at the same time, I think uh, a lot of people watch too many Disney movies as such and all these sci-fi movies. I think the illusion in life is, is sometimes lost with a lot of people. But you have to say, p- bookies aren't out to get people. They're doing a service the same way as Tesco's doing a service. Tesco's not out to get you selling your unripe bananas. They're doing a service. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. It's just a stigma. But I think, I think people within the industry actually know that you know, as you as you were saying, Barry, like when I, when I did work with an on-course bookmaker, we had most of these regulars could come and have any amount of bets, like on as you said on the cap, like and then pay or fix up after. There's no problem, like it's just there's a stigma outside of it that should be that in the shadows that should be brought out, like and I think you see it's very hard for the media to portray it in a positive way. Gambling really isn't it now as such, like because they can't advertise and stuff like that and. Look, you don't want to you don't want to be sensitive towards people that there's probably people with problems out there either. But a lot of people just do it for the enjoyment, and they can. It's moderation, isn't it? Everything well, in moderation. Yeah, yeah, and I also think, Mark, there's a big differentiation which I don't think is is portrayed um, like it should be between on course boys and the off course boys. There's a massive difference. A massive difference. We just go to the race courses. We just take money uh, bets. We haven't got a, a fob next to us. We just take bets on that particular yeah. race. Obviously, the off-course boys and everything else, fair play, but they have got an abundance of things that people can have a gamble on, twenty-four-seven, every second of the day. We, we don't have the fob. We don't have the fobs here in Ireland, but I we actually took over some companies or offices in Birmingham last year, and I seen the difference. They have the fobs over in the UK. Obviously, I, I have seen the difference over there, and I have so I have seen both worlds. So I understand where you're coming from in that sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, we should brand ourselves not bookies. We should be something else. You know, uh, but bookies obviously in general terms, but we should brand it something else so, so we can differentiate between yeah. being classed on on a on a level playing level, if you like, ground as as the off course boys. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong, everyone's got to make a few, but of course they have, and that's what we're in it for. You know what I mean? We, we we go out and we work and we try, but there's not many not many jobs, not many businesses where you can go out and you can come home a lot worse off, work your nuts off for a couple of days, it's and come true. home a lot worse off. You know, anyone yeah, generally yeah, yeah. goes out to work comes back with a few bob in the pocket. Yeah, well, at the end of the day, you're you're taking you're betting with an outcome too that you don't know of. It's different. Like people forget here that the outcome is not unknown. Nobody knows it. You just don't have this 
illusion that bookmakers have secret inside information to every race that's ever gone. I, I think that's about as accurate as getting a tip for a virtual race at Steeple Downs. Yeah, <laughs> that's about. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. Because well, it, because one of the jockeys in great form over there, huh? A funny story about that actually, because uh, my mate used to work in a betting shop. Actually, he's a fellow bookie. He used to work in a betting shop, and uh, when it first came out of virtuals, it was towards Christmas. So he put a he put a sheet on the wall, and he turned around and said, "Right, uh, day day return to Steeple Downs. All expenses yeah. paid, food, lunch, free beer, and everything else." And he had he had a column this everyone signing up, and even people in the morning uh, knocking on the door at nine o'clock. Oh, where's the coach? That's brilliant. That's brilliant. <laughs> well, I actually I had a I had a phone call one day from a boy and said that he had, a, he had a phone call from one of the jockeys that was riding the stable dance. And I said, was, it, I guess, was, he, was, he, was he not a cartoon? He said, no, no, no. He's, he's full on genuine. He'd take the temper leave. And I said, I'll leave it today. Anyway. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Funny enough, that's one of the only places you can stand at the moment, actually. There's plenty of pitches going. I wonder if there's social, there social the distancing there. The fans are 150% as well, that's a good thing. Uh, Put me down for a pitch, please. Uh, <laughs> well, the anger rank comes from YouTube boys. Well, the bookmaking industry gets nothing but flack, right? But one thing I think now, when this all counts down, the money the bookmakers put out for sponsorship, for all sorts of anger, I think all that there will come to a, a sharp end because there's not much loss now that the bookmakers will be trying to recoup. They'll not be wanting to put money out in the thing. And I think the industry will see what the bookmakers we're doing for the industry. Do you know, like that's, for everyone says, don't bookmaker sponsor this, they don't want them sponsoring that. Well, see when they stop sponsoring, you'll see the massive difference. Do you not agree? I think by the, I think what, what it's all up in the air at the moment, Dustin. I think where the, where the difference is going to be is how much money will be floating around in a couple of months' time. That's the thing. Because people have been furloughed, they've started the cash, and in all honesty, apart from going online, they're not really spent that much. So yeah. there could be a fair amount of money still flying around. We don't know, do we? You know, all of it, it, they, they might get, you know, inundated. People might think, oh, I'm dying for a bet. Who knows? I've got this money now I've saved up over the last couple of months. You know, maybe not, but maybe, because the government have passed out quite a lot of money to keep people in jobs, basically. You know, yeah. so that we don't, it doesn't necessarily hold true in my mind that people won't have much money to go out with. That's all I would say. But yeah. obviously, the longer it goes on for us not working, uh, the harder it'll be for us because people will be spending money in other ways. And then when the, the bookies get on course in another three or four months, maybe, then it'll be back to the old routine and, you know, the summer's over and, um, you know, it, it, we'll have to write it off. Yeah, it's a lot, there's a lot more under be seen what will happen. Like, we're, we're always amazing what can happen. But as you say, the, the future's unknown. Nobody knows. You can only just, I think, the way things were before and the, the talk about this new normal, it'll probably be a new normal all across the board. People, like... A lot of the older generation now, they haven't went to the bookies. They're not going to open an online account. So when the betting comes back and they go to the bookmaker, they will not want to go to the bookmakers because of vulnerability. They'll be afraid. And that'll be, that's a, I would say, Mark, you would know better than I would in this case, but most of the regular punters from during the day anyway, midweek, would be older generation, would they be? Well, your, your morning punters, you normally get your morning punters to be generally an older crowd where they come in and have their lucky 15s. They may even have them rolled out. Uh, come in, read the paper, have the chat. There are probably five or six there in every office that might meet up at certain times every morning. It's a social aspect. People don't realise it's a social aspect. They might only spend five, six, seven pound euros, but it's it's their it's their money to spend every morning. And they get out. They meet they meet their friends that they wouldn't meet. And now they're sitting at home and they're hearing all the the media going on about like oh all, all the older people need to stay at home and minors just. I think that most of the older people are nearly healthier than those younger people. Yeah. Like, but like, then when we do open back up, will those people come back in? Because as you said, they'll be feeling vulnerable, and do you know, will they be after being away for so long? They might say, "Take it, like, know. you know." It's just I, hard. To... I think they'll come back. I think. I think people. Yeah, I, I, I personally, I don't think there'll be too much change. In all honesty, yeah. people look at it in different ways. I think. People love going racing. They love going to betting shops. They're into a habit. They're missing all the mates. I yeah. think um, it's like having a pint down the local. It's a hobby, really, isn't it? Like, and, and yeah. those generation, they're level-headed. Like, they come in, they do their few bets, and they go away, and then they'll collect it the following day. They're not back down ten minutes later if they have a winner. 
they're there and they're at home to watch it and it's an evening's entertainment for them. And especially now, because I know RTE are going to broadcast, maybe, I think it's only going to be summaries every evening and stuff. But I think yeah, now... Two, with, two races every Friday night. Two, yeah. two races. So it's fantastic, isn't it? Like? With, with yeah. RTE and ITV, yeah. I've got a lot of meetings. And of course, we're getting we're going to have a lot of congested good racing, group ones, the guineas, all this, all this is going to come together. I think we actually could turn this negative to positive. The racing is going to be a lot better now, right? Obviously, we're going to have standard meetings like Newcastle and, and Wolverhampton and stuff. But like, we are going to get a lot of congested good racing during the middle of the summer, the flat racing. Now, they're going to keep all the group ones and stuff, like, which is great. ITV, RTE, hopefully we can portray a positive and use it as a positive. But as Barry says, it's the on course now as well. We need to get back out and we need to get whatever crowds we can, whether it be... A couple of hundred or a hundred even at each meeting just to have you can like most race courses have a lot of space where they can social distance like yeah exactly it's an open and as barry made the point it's an open area like it's it's not like you're yeah. stuck in a room where everyone's oxygen is floating around amongst each other you're in that the open sense. air but the sun is shining this apparently this corona doesn't like the heat like june july we're going to have some, hopefully we have a couple of scorchers and it's just hard to know. Like as John Gosden made a fantastic point there a few weeks ago, he turned around and said, "You're more vulnerable to going to the supermarket yeah. than going home." Sure. And that's it is totally true. Like inside and outside, it's obviously two different worlds that you're you're not mixing as such. And I think see this coronavirus. If any positives come out of it, I think where people were letting their guard down too much. Were Jesus, there must have seemed soap for the last thirty years. <laughs> General cleanliness, like no, but I think like, that's what it is. It is a rude, it is a rude awakening. Like, but look at this one, Mark. And by I like going into the pub, a local pub, there was a newspaper sitting on the counter. You sit and read it, you would have thought nothing of that now. Jesus, yeah. I would get a pair of gloves on, <laughs> left it and throw it out of a road now. <laughs> I wouldn't but that's what you. Well, because it was a crime, crime watch and all that. You, you know, you think your prints would be everywhere now. It's one of them, yeah. yeah. The yeah. Gloves, they haven't, they haven't got a jacket with, with the blue lights, but no, as you said. Right. You go like I go to the supermarket now. You're actually you're kind of more aware of it inside as you when you're especially when going into crowds. But when you're outside and if you did bump into a mate, you, you stand back a few feet and you're chatting away and you're you're out in the open air. So racing would be the very same. And as you know, most race courses the railing along where the where the finishing line is. Uh, even like if you do close underneath the stand and have the couple of outside bears. Even if, yeah, it's a lot of the All of all, I would say, guys, uh, on a negative side, which I, I, I hate being negative, on a negative side from a bookmaker's point of view, when, when you think about it, if you're a shop worker, um, you know, you won't be on the counter, you're dealing with X amount of people all the time. So if you're a punter, you, you, you're okay, you, go, you might go to a bookie once, once a race, have your bet, disappear. Okay, fair enough, might be arm's length, it might be like a grabbing stick, which I'm just in the process of uh, having a prototype of. <laughs> you know, a six foot grabbing, grabbing where he comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, back into, hopefully into your heart, especially if Mark's having a bet, straight in the heart. <laughs> you won't have to worry about taking it back out if I'm having a bet. <laughs> oh, exactly, yeah. Just keep them on it. <laughs> it's like when you go into those, uh, what's the names, isn't it? Those fruit machine places, the arcades, and you think, oh, that's got it. And, the, and they're that loose, the hands, aren't they? The claws come up like that. Or the one with the oh, claws yeah. that are hanging over the edge, and you think you can put it in like the chairs. You're the 101 not to pick anything up, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. no, but but, uh, but the thing is, coming back to the point, though, is that yeah. you know we're dealing with people on a regular basis. We might have 500 punters a day, or like channel 1200, 1400, whatever. Um, so you're dealing at this, so you're dealing with them all the time. As a negative from a bookmaker point yeah. of view, you're dealing with them all the time. As a punter, you're just seeing your bookie once and gone. Yeah. So, you know, th there is that, that is a slight downside, which I hate yeah. saying it, but that, it has well, to be recognised. So, would, real, you, be, would you be kind of in favour of bringing in a car machine? Well, I mean, the thing is, that, uh, I suppose you want to get back first of all. Yeah, exactly. I mean, to me, a car machine's faffy because if you're busy, Okay, they say they're quite quick, but if you're busy, I like to crack on. Yeah, twenty pound of ten. Yeah, one pound is there. You know, you're on. Oh, uh, can I have ten pound on my card, please? Hold on, I'll just get me. Meanwhile, you got to park and ride. You know what I mean? So yeah. Well, one angle I think that bookmakers could like, I see the likes of these big chains now are releasing these cash cards. You wonder what something like that work in a race card where like someone loads the money in the race card, someone at the door. And then bet with any bookmaker they want there, and then collect the money on the way out. I wonder would something like that work. 
Well, uh, I, I tweeted a couple of weeks ago because I was, I was racking my brains a little bit. Um, and I don't particularly like giving credit within reason. Uh, I've been stung a few times. Uh, you know, the old days wasn't a problem, but I don't like giving definitely, credit. Definitely. Yeah. Credit I don't like giving credit. Yeah. So, so uh, I tweeted, and I'll come up with an idea, which I think is quite a good idea. It's basically, punter comes to you before racing. Here's whatever, X amount, 50 quid, 20 quid, 100 quid, a monkey, whatever. Um, have it for the, you know, the rest of the day. And we'll settle up afterwards. I'll come over. I'll be over here. Look, and have uh, fifty quid on that. Yeah, down a pizza, down a park. Yeah, put it in the computer. Make a note of it. He walks away. There's no contact, apart from that initial contact when he's waved yeah. you in early on. And then you settle it up afterwards. It's and then idea, yeah. price differentiation. Uh, hold on, you know uh, what's name? Uh, Paddy up there has got you know three to one. You're eleven to four. Yeah, you got three fifty. It's not a problem. Yeah, I'll match that. You know, because I'm like that anyway. If you're in the queue and the price is gone, you can still be on as long yeah. as you're not, you know. I've been bored and trimming you up. You well, know, at the end of the queue two, two minutes later or three minutes yeah, later. Exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're going to have that water on all of a sudden 300 quid appears, you know, like Mr. Ben. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, a lot of things. I think this could be a game changing aspect or someone come in with some sort. Like what I always think in America, they have a thing called a race day card and where they say there's six bookmakers involved, right? And as you, obviously you said that that they're gonna they're gonna try to purse their weight about the sex bookmakers, right? Because yeah. it's obviously gonna be the survival of the fittest, which is not fair. Because the weird ones have just as much to give, right? But the angle related there is that put money on the card, and that card was the same for buying a pint for anything. Do you know, like you just go in, it's like it's like a uh, ATM machine. You don't even deal with the person. Go in, yeah. put the card in, and then you can go to have something to eat. Some I thought something over they got over here. If someone came up with it, but no one seems to be wanting to sort issues out at the minute. I don't know why, because I think if people came up with different ideas, it would give people no excuse to ask questions and be negative about it. You want the answers there before you get back. Because I think if you go back into racing and you say, like, what about this here? They're going to turn around and say about money's dirty, money's filthy, right? But the fact is, if you have all the, if you have all the FAQs finished before it even starts back, I think we're in a better position to kick ahead because you don't want this coping out again this do you like no start stop what you could i don't know if it will or not but it's hard to know isn't it no exactly i mean you know they're trying to obviously got to keep it down and don't they don't want the phase two do they you know Uh, confidence if people can get confidence it's like anything in life if you can try and get confidence you know, and forward thinking opposed to all the negativity. I mean, they've, they've, you know, it's like the press over here with, with Dominic Cummins or whatever, you know, rightly or wrongly, but the way they drag on about it and trying to all the negativity, you know, yeah, it keeps yeah. you off people watching the news, doesn't it? You don't, you know. So trying to be positive in whatever you're doing, things come oh, along yes. and, and they knock yeah. you down, but you try and be as positive as much as you can, you know. If you go out and do your bollocks, if you go out and do your bollocks, you can get it out of the next day. That's what I always <laughs> say. Well, someone said, there's always another day, yeah. There's always there's another still day. For the next day, that's a problem. Yeah. As someone said to me before, it's not how you fall, it's how you land, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. exactly. But, well, yeah. with, with bookmakers, on course bookmakers, you've had a lot of bookies come and go because they haven't been able to hack it. You know, Trust they haven't me, been able yeah. to hack the losses. People think, oh, it's, you know, you write your own checks. Oh, ah, yeah, come and have a go. I'll do a job swap with you. So you, yeah. you, you know, you've you got to be sturdy, thick skins, and you've got to go to street, streetwise, and you have to take your losses. Uh, you have to. But if, if someone came up to you this time six months ago and Put, asked you for odds of all this happening around the world, all recently. What what odds would you have given me for? Well, no, to be fair, to be fair, it, it, it probably not that big, really, because you know. Do you think it was on the horizon, like. Well, I, I, there could be ones. There could be ones coming down the line, couldn't there? You know, it's yeah. it, technology. Well, think, well, well, personally, I think the flood gates are open now. Like, yeah. you, there's nothing can be ruled out with any confidence. If someone no, exactly. said, "There's nothing," there's, I don't know the. the the circuit, well, we're near enough have to start following the clowns because we're in a circus now, isn't it? Like, it's, just, <laughs> yeah. it's a it's a different, geez, things have just changed massively from 10 oh. years ago. Think when the next five years, even the next six months of what will change. But as we said, as you said before, you just have to be positive and just kick on, just hope for the best. Expect the worst and take the best, isn't it? Like, uh, you don't have to expect the worst. No. What do you think? <laughs> why, why are you giving us best odds guaranteed, huh? No, you know I don't do that. That's a that's a <laughs> well, you know, The punch has got easy enough as it is, but coming up and saying, oh, you know, uh, six to one now, if it goes out to ten to one, I want ten to one. Oh, ah, yeah, of course you can. That's the idea. What about, well, if it three, what about if it comes into three to one? Can I give you three to one? Will you, you know, what about a punter <laughs> best odds guaranteed? 
<laughs> well, well, Mark told me before this here, he said, ask Barry, will he do uh, money back if the favourite's beaten? And I said, I don't know, you have to ask him yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Money back if yours comes second, so we'll ask you that. <laughs> well, I was oh, money, back, money back if it runs poorly, but only in my, my opinion. Uh, so it, has to, it has to be all in our favour or nothing. No way. Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> Boys, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Hopefully we can do this again. It was very yeah. enjoyable. And, uh, hopefully we give people a bit of an interest in it. the other side of bookmaking as well. It's not all, the, as I said, black cloaks. And well, you know, but the, thing is, the thing is, Das, is that that's the thing with things like uh, Twitter. Race courses don't particularly like it. But like to me going on and sort of like sometimes pulling up. I try not to, but if I pull up, I think that, you know, when they charge me for an extra worker when I haven't got an extra worker and all that sort of stuff, um, you know, they don't like it. But it's got to go out there. You know, everything, as you said earlier, is a lot more transparent now, isn't it? Mm. Uh, you know? I think it should be pushed that way. I think the negative, there's plenty of negative in any industry in the past, right? I don't think there's one industry you can look at that doesn't have a, ne- a negative side for the last 50 years, which has progressed, right? You can't keep going back and saying, this happened, this happened. Some stage you're going to have to say, we're going to move forward, make sure it doesn't happen again, which I think the gambling authority has did in certain things. Jeez, they can only do so much, right? There's obviously going to be gambling problems. There's always, with any industry, there's going to be a problem, no matter what you do, what sport. And so they're trying their best to promote things as much as they can, but realistically, they can't do much more than what they're doing. They can't hold your hand when you're having a bet. You know, like, we'll have to sometimes say, like, We'll have to take our own incentive and you can't be expected to be a psychological person either. Someone do lose their money here. You can't keep track of people. You can do your best to spot signs and they're educating you more when to spot problem gatherers. But there's only so much that you can do as such. Yeah, but it's like you don't you don't see him harping onto the off license tellers like as much as you know. Every, look, we don't want to be unsensitive to anyone that does have problems, no, definitely as not. we're saying, because there is like an but like, people need to take some responsibility as well, you know. It's not, yeah. it's not the people taking the money. No, there's a massive injury. Boys, we'll leave it there anyway. We'll finish this recording up here. And great chatting to you anyway, lads. And another thing, I'm go- I'm gonna set up a GoFundMe page to get Mark's haircut straight after this. The link's gonna be in the bio. We're gonna be quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, send me through the link for that, will you, Dash? Yeah. I'll get that up. <laughs> Cheers, lads. Hey, boys. That's finished recording. How's things?